So I think that's better. So I think um, first I will uh, uh, give the floor to Carolyn Henschen, our director, to um, give an introduction to this vision and then um, uh, Marley, please take the floor for a detailed idea of this. Yes, thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Do we not want to maybe, or are there some people maybe who could, should introduce themselves, Shruti? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we don't really, That's just very idea. briefly, huh? but. Yes, I think everybody can introduce ourselves, like for everybody could do that, I think, because I think there's some, everybody who does know, know everybody. So, so let let's, us, let's start with you, Shruti. Yes, so I'm, yes, as I told you, so I am from India and I actually, um, yeah, I grew up in India and I moved to Germany for my bachelor's. I live in Germany right now, but I'm currently in New York for this month for uh, one month for one month of work. And that's why I'm in our office, but there's not, we, we're, we're starting out our Wi-Fi and that's why I have the situation. I'm going to see if I can go to the 11th floor and use the other wi-fi as well so i can show up my face um but um yeah so um i i've i've done my bachelor's in international relations in germany master's in development studies and diplomacy um with the un university for peace and i'm also currently doing my phd um in uh, international governance so yeah i i i work um almost yeah, I work, I work and I study uh, uh, at the same time. So that's me and yeah, I'm based in Germany and thank you. Nice to meet you all. Okay, so maybe you have to choose the next one, Shruti. Huh? Yes, maybe let's do that. Uh, and the next person chooses the next person. <laughs> so um, Prita, would you like to go? Hi everyone, I'm Prita. I'm based in Melbourne since five years now. And I've been in Women Federation World Peace with Anne for the last one year now. And I'm a global business consultant. At the same time, I'm a coach where I help women to negotiate their salaries and be more independent. Um, I did my studies in finance and um, an ex like uh, my expertise is more about international finance. And thank you for the meeting and look forward to know everyone here. That's very good, finance. That's, we need that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the next one, uh, Shweta. Great, thanks, Shweta. Looks like our names are rhyming, so that's good. <laughs> uh, Hello, everybody. My name is Shweta Shankar, and I've been with uh, Global Women's Peace Network and Women's Federation for World Peace for the last three years now. So love attending the events, love doing whatever Anne tells me to do. And uh, <laughs> I remember during COVID, we actually had the uh, MC drop out because she had COVID at the time when she was supposed to be running the Women's Fed event. So I had to step in a week before the event to run it so it's been it's been an amazing journey so uh audrey and i run uh leadership and business coaching which we've been doing for the last decade so really looking at how we can assist leaders and especially women who are in corporate space or even who are emerging leaders so we're working with the mentorship program and we have been for the last three years as well so it's lovely to see them change over time and uh, we come from the health promotion space or been a dentist in my past life as well lots to do with health wow. so yeah love being part of this space thank you for having us I probably call upon oh Susan Susan Con. did I pronounce your name right Okay, thank you, Shrida. Shrida, and um, 
Actually, it's Kone, but it's okay, no worries. <laughs> okay, my name is Susan Kone. I'm, I'm, operate, I'm, I'm actually based in Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. And I'm um, a um, social worker and also a um, certified mediator. And also I'm um, uh, the Women Federation International Vice President for Africa. And also I run the Women Federation chapter in Kenya and also uh, coordinating the International Association for for First Ladies for Peace in, in Africa as well. Yeah, so uh, I've been working for the last, uh, I think, 13 years with the Women Fed. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, of course, we are always with uh, Mrs. Caroline, Caroline and Mary, and uh, we're very familiar with each other, but today's new faces, and I'm very eager to know what the meeting holds, you know. Of, of course, I've been working a bit closely with um, Vienna, Women Federation UN. In Vienna, I've been having uh, some, uh, um, they normally, you know, invite me for some webinars, things to do the, with the UN side events, you know, and also the Women Federation UN uh, office in uh, in New York. We are working very, very closely together with Mary in the programs there, and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so the next person should be uh, Christine. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, good morning, good evening. I am Christine. I am from the Philippines, but now I'm in New York. So I am a temporary UN representative. So I am doing my training here. But before that, I was the um, Regional Secretary General of Asia Pacific One. So our IVP is not able to attend. So I will try to absorb all the information and will convey it to her. Nice meeting y'all. So I would like to call on Kahi. Kahi also invited. She is one of our bright young women in Asia One. <laughs> Yes, hello. Good morning or good evening, everyone. My name is Kahi Dakal. I'm 21. I'm currently in my fourth year taking up development studies. And I recently completed a semester abroad in France and Europe. And my background mostly is um, I've been assisting either in Women's Fed in Nepal or within Asia Pacific or with UPF events as well. So yeah, nice to meet you all. We all know your mother, huh? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think next is Madam Anne. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm actually in Cambodia at the moment with uh, your mom and also Vipa from Asia Pacific One. We're 90 minutes behind schedule. So I just tiptoed out of the end of the meeting to be with you. So uh, I'm an educator by trade and uh, I'm the IVP for Asia Pacific 2, National President of Australia, and love working with these two wonderful ladies, Shweta and Prita, who were really keen to get involved. So that made me really happy. That's me. Thank you. Are, so we're are we just nine, huh, Merle? That's it's just one screen, huh? Okay, so I think it's only me left, right? But I would like to ask Lua if she wants to say uh, introduce herself. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. So nice to see you all. I think it's also, uh, so my name is Lua because you can't see my name on the screen. So my name is Lua Nazarian and I am uh, born and raised in Sweden, um, one of these Scandinavian countries that very few people actually visit because, it, because of its cold. Um, my background is uh, I'm half Egyptian, half Persian. I also have uh, studied, uh, I have a bachelor's in international relations like everyone else here in Geneva, I feel like. <laughs> and uh, I also have another bachelor's in comparative religious studies uh, and a master's in peace and conflict studies. So that's a bit of my background and I 
been loving the work that you have been doing so far. So I've been in a few conversations with Caroline to join, to see what I can do and help out in the organization. Um, currently I am based in Geneva and I also work as a partnership and membership developer. Uh, so uh, for another NGO. So this is a bit about me. Yeah, yeah. good. And maybe I wanna just tell a little story about how we met, you know, Oh yes, it's very yes. special. You know, our founder of the Women's Federation, Madam Hak Jahan Moon, at one point uh, at the beginning in the springtime this year, we heard, we, well, we, some of us knew already how much she loves daffodils. And there was this kind of message going around the world. Let's all send photos of ourselves with our daffodils. Well, maybe in the South, you're in a different season at that time, I guess. Maybe it was more Northern hemisphere. And uh, so I was at the UN that day and I was uh, attending human rights council and I walked outside and I looked out a window in a field of daffodils out the, one of the upstairs windows. So after the session was over, I went out and I stood in that field with my telephone and I was trying to take a selfie of me so you could see all these daffodils actually. And of course I'm not very good with selfies actually. And she was working at the UN with, she was working with WFUNA, uh, World Federation of United Nations Organizations in the UN. And she maybe felt sorry for me and walked by and she said, I can, I can take a photo of you. <laughs> so somehow from that point, I mean, it was already an amazing meeting, but somehow from that point, we've been talking and, uh, and I think we can yeah. do some good things together yeah. actually huh? she, hopefully yeah so anyway my my task today is to, uh, so everyone has been introduced i think right yeah i'm merly yeah merly maybe when you speak you can introduce yourself is that good sure carolyn yes yeah and uh so i i'm gonna just going to give a little bit of an overview and um some kind of um yeah just a few thoughts about this of course, it's not, it's definitely not the first time we're talking about this. Of course, this is a recurring discussion that we have every year or two. But each time we have this discussion, we get more good ideas about more possibilities. Because we know those of us who are working at the United Nations, we know that the, the sky is the limit. We know what incredible programs are being managed by our team around the world. We know that our uh, credibility at the UN is not just because these amazing principles that are guiding our work, but because we have been working since 1992 and even before 1988, I think in Japan, to do all these incredible programs that are actually bringing change locally all around the world. And at some point there was 150 countries that had women's federation teams actually. Huh? now maybe a little bit less. And um, so at this point, I wanted to just refer back to, uh, Merle, I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit more than five minutes, okay? No worries, Carolyn, <laughs> go okay. ahead, yeah. Okay, because we, uh, some of us know that in 2012, the other co-founder of our Women's Federation for World Peace called us all to Korea actually was soon before he passed on and before he ascended to the spiritual realm. But he had one message that he wanted to give anyway to the women that are listening to him, and especially Women's Federation members from around the world came. And what he said was that um, you have been all doing these incredible programs around the world, working so hard, bringing success, but the next stage of this Women's Federation of this, or even of this kind of global effort of concerning women and leadership is that you have to, um, you have to reach higher. You have to use your successes to influence governance in the world. You have to, and, and he said specifically governance about the right priorities. I think all of us understand what that means. There are a lot of things being promoted and pushed that are really not only not important, but even very damaging. So it was a very uplifting kind of meeting and you know, very loving, like fatherly, 
even grandfatherly kind of feeling coming from him. And uh, I think since then, many of us have also, I mean, anyway, our UN office, we that is our mission. We've been trying to do that. But I think for us to really be successful, we have to really have our ear to the ground about what is now happening day by day, week by week, month by month in our local, you know, in our local um, chapters, because that's the way the UN is working. The UN is talking not about things happened 30 years ago, talking about what are the problems right now. And we know that you, in your local places, you are, you see the things, even before it becomes a problem, you see what's starting to happen, and you're already thinking about ways of preventing it from getting worse. So we need to really listen to you. And um, and I think the point, you know, I, I took a few notes here. I said that we have to, in our UN office work, we have to think, our, no, not even just our UN office work, in our work in general, we have to think not just about working in parallel to what the UN is doing. So we know there are the, the SDGs, we know there's the human rights declaration, and then there's the work of all the different agencies and these incredible documents and, and covenants and things all of, you know that have been agreed upon. But we have to see how we can better actually influence these things because these documents, these, these events are not static. They're not things you know, not things, even the, if I think Universal Declaration of Human Rights, one of my most favorite docu documents, this is not all decided. People, every time there's a meeting, they're trying to change something in the interpretation towards their point of view. So we also have a point of view. I think all of us, and even the new of us, um, the newest of us among us here today, I think we are together because we think very similarly on many, many points. So. Uh, so we, we're calling you to this meeting because we want to see how we can work more closely with you so that we can be the most effective at the UN, but also so you can be most effective to be able to work with your governments, again, not just to make events, and then it's written in a report and put on our website, but actually so it can go the few steps further so that actually the governments can learn about it they can even rewrite their policies or change their norms because they can see that what we're doing and, and the way we're working is actually the most effective way to solve problems. So this is kind of our, our clarion call again, you know, recurring clarion call to our to our regions and to our nation, to the nations in, in the regions. And we know some are more ready to do that. Some, I mean, I think many of our chapters already are thinking in their local government, you know, they're trying, they're reporting or they're, they're getting them to co-sponsor events that they make, making reports maybe even further up. Um, but I think we can do better. And I think we are called on at this time really to do better because there's a, so much polarization. There's so much danger in everything that we need some what was the word we were saying? Um, uh, with the feet on the ground, some very, uh, what is this expression? Down to, Down to earth. I mean, we can be the most high spiritually enlightened people, but we have to use that to really, you know, work somehow meaningfully on this earth. So I just have a few small points that I'm, I'm going to make here, and then they will go, uh, Merle will go into more, more detail. Um, Yeah, I mean, one example I was thinking, Susan, you know, Susan, in the, uh, we, we had a member from your chapter in the DRC uh, at the time of the Commission on the Status of Women. We called, we called some of our chapters to send representatives to a training we made at the Commission on the Status of Women. Some of you were there. And you, one, one lady from your chapter president, I think, from the Democratic Republic of Congo, she came. And she was telling us about an event that uh, they were organizing for the um, March 8th International Women's Day. And it was so moving actually, because she talked about how um, like there's so much 
it's so sad and there's so much violence. Of course, there are many good things too, but there is a level of violence and pain she felt also in the DRC and violence against women that they decided they would meet together on March the 8th and they would, they were just going to sort of like shed tears and mourn together instead of, um, oh, hi, Shruti, nice to see you. It's, instead of, you know, and, and of course not stop there. You don't just mourn, but actually use that as some kind of springboard for what they're going to do next. And there's so many kind of, I thought just that creative ideas, I brought that up actually to the ambassador of the Democratic Republic of Congo when I met him about a month ago and I told him about this program. And somehow through that, we actually organized an event, an event together, in fact. So anyway, there's so many possibilities when we're, when we're doing good things, we're reporting them and then we're fo especially following up on that. So. Um, there are so many ways in the UN that we can that we can influence. One of them is something that I think many of us do very well is just through communicating communicating with people who are in decision making positions. So, you know, with the ambassadors or with the the experts that are actually usually know much more than the ambassadors do actually about the issues, and uh, making ourselves very active in that kind of area. Also, we have experience of sitting in on briefings and, and drafting of uh, recommendations. I had this experience many times in the Human Rights Council when they're writing up the recommendations that will be deciding. It, it, just a few words can make such a huge difference, actually. If you can have somebody in there to fight for the, the right priority, that's exactly going back to that speech in 2012, then you can completely shift the way a certain document will come, will, will, will end. And actually from that document, so many other things will come. You know, people refer back to that and say, well, that was said there. So now we can go a few step fur steps further. So there, you know, we have to be very attentive, but also we have to be very well informed about what are what is happening in our regions. In fact, that's what is why, and, and Murley will talk more about this, why we need some reliable persons to um, uh, in each region who can have that ear to what's happening in your region and help us to stay in touch with that and finding ways that we can bring these solutions to the UN. And we have many, many uh, openings, many possibilities through our, um, you know, there are different, well, there are different commissions like Af within Africa and and Asia or, or Latin America and Europe, we have these ECOSOP commissions that we we have a place we can we can speak at, we can give reports to, we can write statements to. Uh, but of course, we also have um, we have the um, you know we have these different bodies, which I think on a, at a later point we will talk about those more different bodies where we. Because of our status, we are invited to these bodies to, to sort of negotiate. Of course, we're not as upfront as the, as the governments, but nevertheless, and again, it's been my experience many times, we can bring some point in. Sometimes it's bringing points in, like substantive points that help the solution uh, become more clear. Sometimes it's just bringing in a certain kind of peace and harmony that allows the people in the room to be able to think less, kind of less polarizing way so that a better solution can be realized. And again, I've many times experienced this. And I think as in Women's Federation, we are especially good at making this kind of a platform where people's, I would say almost their higher thinking and less abrasive kind of mind can, can come in the front. And this, it's so important actually for the final outcome. So we have, for instance, the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, we are in Geneva. Some of us um, are not so much, actually, Women's Federation less involved. At certain times, we have been more involved. But the potential is there. This is you know, the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. And the point there is that um, um, this is a body that is, that is critiqued quite a bit for sometimes it's when some in some circles for its uh, 
maybe it's it's leanings you know of course the, the, the it's incredibly valuable the, the work that is being done it's one of the oldest commissions but um but they too need us they need the voice of i would say moderation and they need the voice of um, those coming from civil society side that are really there not just for attacking but really there to bring in solutions that work from our local communities and uh, you know over and over and over again i see the gratitude of those who are trying to run these kind of bodies these commissions and these committees when they have someone bringing in some kind of reasonable and not attacking kind of um, uh, solutions so we have Commission on the Status of Women, of course, in New York is one area. Um, big point there was uh, uh, the discussion about the methods of work, where it is it is very much agreed within this commission that um, um, that um, uh, you know it can't just it. Of course, it's a government-led commission; it's an intergovernmental body, but it cannot just be the voices of the governments that are doing you know, from beginning to end, uh, coming up with the issues and making the decisions that we have. Civil society has to be involved. And of course, they understand that more and more. But we ourselves in Women's Federation, we can also, there are many more ways that we can be involved in that. And one of those is just by in our own nations coming in with, um, uh, you know, next time the Commission on the Status of Women, women next year, 2024, it's about poverty. So this is really, this is our founding issue. We have so much to say about that. So we need to already now get involved with our governments, write to them, get involved and in telling them that we are there. We have all this, this activity in, in the area of poverty uh, um, elimination and, um, and that we would like to work together with them to prepare for the CSW. I know other NGOs have done this very successfully and I'm, I've no doubt that we can do this much better. Then there is um, maybe just almost finished here, uh, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime. I think that has, as um, Susan mentioned, this is really a model for us because um, they have really been able, also because the attitude at the uh, UNODC, UN Office on Drugs and Crimes, they have a certain, maybe because they're a little bit outside of the, some of the fight of the human rights and even New York kind of administrative kind of work. They're a little bit more on their own. So they have, I would say, a, a more reasonable kind of attitude about things and very much in line with, I think, our work. And um, our, our sisters, our, our UN representatives in Vienna have managed to really have events and uh, make efforts in the, these different commissions, side events and statements that are very much uh, offering solutions to what is being discussed, but again, very much directly uh, involved with drawing from our work in the in the chapters. For instance, as Susan said, the, what's happening in in you know concerning migration or concerning education and forced migration, violence against women, many points because of the the, the chapters work in in Southeast Asia or in Africa, we can actually bring in speakers from our chapters, like Susan has spoke several times, and really to say what is actually working. And this is very impactful when as they're looking for solutions. But where we have to be a little bit stronger, where, where we can do much more is we have to make sure that it is not just an amazing event. Again, that we write up well, but we have to make sure that this gets to the places where they are actually making these decisions about, you know, on migration or on on these different, uh, you know, specific points that are being discussed. Because the reality is, in these fora, these international fora, decisions are constantly being made that at some point will very much affect our lives. We we have to be there. Same thing, Human Rights Council. I won't. I could say the most about that, but I won't say about that. And, um, and there are just there are certain certain mechanisms within all these bodies, like the Universal Periodic Review of the Human Rights Council, or this in the high level political forum. There is a uh, um, you know um, uh, the call to collect different reports from each country. 
we need to get ourselves into these reports. And there's a certain process for doing that for all of these. And we want to be able to call upon you to help us to prepare these reports that can be sent directly to the UN for a specific country. Sometimes it's country, sometimes it's issue. And I think we can have an incredible impact. And I think some of these reports can be sent to multiple places, you know, uh, because these issues are oftentimes cross-cutting. So conclusion, my sentence in conclusion is um, the UN is more and more realizing that they need us because if they don't, they make decisions, they make important conventions, but then they don't work. And then they have to go back again and start over. So actually, if they work with us from the beginning, if we make ourselves available, they can't help but be you know, excited to see some of the successes that we are doing. I know it's on our website, we can see it, but we have to really cooperate. And this meeting, I think this again is to try to see if we can't what's the word, um, glean from your great work in the field and have a constant communication from each region so that we can be most, you know, uh, we can be most relevant to the United Nations for you, for us, actually for the, for the betterment of this, of all of humanity. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mer Merle, it went further than me. I went longer. Yeah, maybe I acro crossed over a little bit of what you're going to say too, huh? Thank you, Carolyn. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Merle Varlan. I am the Deputy Director of the Offices of uh, UN Relations of Women's Federation. And uh, I'm also one of the IVPs of Women's Federation. And with that, I am... Um, uh, my responsibility is to take care of the um, corporate matters of the headquarters of Women's Federation International and uh, here in New York. My background is uh, well in education, but I never really practiced uh, as a teacher. But I, uh, my expertise is in community development and nonprofit management. And uh, I've been with Women's Federation for the last 25 years. And uh, the first 16 years, 15, 16 years, I, um, I was uh, at the UN office when we pioneered the UN Office of Women's Federation. And then, you know, from weekly meetings at the UN, can you imagine? more than 10 years going to the United Nations, meetings after meetings, talking about world level agenda. And I came from Philippines, born and raised in Philippines. I've lived in America for you know, 30 years. Um, but when I go back to the Philippines, the things that they talked about at the UN, the policies that they create, um, they don't connect. I don't see them being realized, the, the goals and visions of the UN. I don't see them being realized at the community level, in my community. And so I got jaded. I kind of uh, got disappointed with uh, my expectations at the UN. So in 2012, I resigned from my work as the assistant administrator and went back to the community. And I stayed there for um, nine, uh, oh, almost 10 years. And I developed a, I was actually in search of a, a development framework. I developed a, a formula um, to answer my questions, my disappointment with how the UN is ineffective for me personally. And um, in the community development process, uh, that's when I was able to work with the local stakeholders, uh, the community leaders, the women, the young people, uh, mayors, congresswomen, and up to the national level. So to complement, actually to complement with what Carolyn explained, so on the um, and at the level of the the global development agenda and and the United Nations policy making 
um, information dissemination is very, very important. But um, in I personally, I believe that the reason why the UN has not been able to accomplish its vision and goal for the last 77 years is because there is this big part of connection and actual implementation of the policies in the community and national level. And so I think it's a very good balance with what Carolyn, where uh, Carolyn's area of expertise at the UN level, um, putting all these policies and knowing uh, where we can be effective. And, but, but the, the reason for my passion and really uh, my motivation in putting this together, um, expanding our office to have an advocacy, uh, UN advocacy team in the region is this crucial part. I think it's the missing link of the establishment, the realization of the UN's goals is when uh, the policies that the UN and the national government formulated and we, we understand it and then we create projects and frameworks and manage those projects that it can be really impactful in the community that it changed lives. It changed um, the, the, uh, the level of where, whether it is uh, violence against women or poverty or any issues that the way we craft and, and implement our projects, it can really be um, meaningful and impactful and it changed the lives of people. And I believe that when we, um, when we formulate, document everything and create a science-based data and, and uh, it, put together the success stories in a way that it convinces the governments, the local governments and national governments. That's when um, the goals of the United Nations, the SDGs can move forward into realization. Mm -hmm. So on that note, um, I'd like to present to you, we only have now around 13 minutes. So I'm gonna breeze through uh, the, presentation that I created so that um, you will have an idea of our action plan. And, and then after that, we can have a Q and A. Okay. Um, let's just see if I can make it. Uh, presentation mode. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, so our goal is to establish a regional UN advocacy team. So we start with the team and later on, when you do very well, then we could expand it to a UN advocacy office. And so we, we will be talking about, let me just move this here. Our introduction, I think we already uh, introduced our team and our vision, goals and objectives, implementation plan, team, and focal person, key activities, and then expected outcome and impact. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think uh, pretty much what Carolyn and I said, this uh, the eight, yeah uh, we uh, we want to establish a a strategic hub in the region, and then um, I don't want to I think it's the main uh, for now what we have the main advocacy uh, we have is um, peace building women youth and leadership education environment sustainable development um, and then human rights. And, and, and there's more to that. But um, basically our vision is that the team will operate in coordination with WFWPI's broader global mission to promote collaboration and partnership for peace, reconciliation and social development, and eventually realize one global family rooted in a culture of sustainable peace. And then, um, so here um, the team, 
in the region will uh, support the Women's Federation International and the national, a regional and national Women's Federation in advancing women and youth leadership, promoting peace and conflict resolution, implementing the UN SDGs. And then strengthening partnerships, advocating for policy change, monitoring and reporting on progress. So these parts, Carolyn, uh, thoroughly explain to us how this process is, works. Okay, and um, and even the, the importance of the establishment of a WFWPI UN advocacy team in the regions. And uh, primarily, there are uh, six points we have a regional focus and expertise or tailored approach to advocacy and program implementation and strengthened advocacy impact, increase our Women's Federation's capacity to advocate for policy changes and facilitate more targeted and influential engagement with regional bodies and policy makers. Um, I, as I mentioned, in my 10 years experience in Philippines, once uh, the most powerful way we can change policies, uh, create policies, or even just local level ordinances is when we work together with community leaders and understand the needs and have the right uh, formula to address these issues. And then enhance the networking and collaboration um, with uh, these local leaders and national leaders. Um, and then foster stronger partnerships with local NGOs, governments, and UN agencies. And then uh, monitoring and evaluation. Um, with this, we can enable closer monitoring and evaluation of projects and initiatives. Um, and then visibility and recognition. When we are, uh, when we collaborate and partner with community leaders, businesses, and um, and government leaders, they can see a, a, a consistent pattern track record and uh, of what they do because governments really, before they partner with us, they they have to check whether we are credible organization, we are good managers, and we have track record of um, working with the community and how impactful are our projects. So these are the basis where um, beyond the halls and of the conference halls and the smiles and the hellos and the compliments of each other's uh, organization, uh, we have to go beyond and be organized and really establish a track record of our success stories and our management. Oops. Okay, so yeah, here it says the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. And here, this is our proposed team. And um, this is just an example for Asia because Christine, um has been here at the UN office here in New York. She's under training for six months. So she's next month she's going to finish and go back to uh, Asia and establish a her UN team in Bangkok. And then um uh, but here we have Carolyn, me, and uh the, the team leader and team member, uh these four team of four or five, depending on how much network you have uh, and people willing to work with you, will work under, under the IVP in your region. For example, Susan, if you recommend um, two or three from Africa, we would be working uh, with you and you would appoint and you know, uh, go through the process. And so for between our office and your office and this team, we will be in constant communication. And, um, okay. And then, so I created a, a schedule, um, the months I, oh, it disappeared. But here, uh, starting August next month, 
um, IVP identify and recommend team leader and team member orientation and training, vision making and planning of uh, your regional activities. And then in September, uh, you would start, well, actually August, you could already start joining our bi-weekly global UN reps meeting. And then we would uh, work together uh, guide you on creating this, uh, producing this SWOT analysis of your region of WFWP status, and then eventually also the national, the, the government uh, status of how they are doing with uh, the overall, so that to assess what are the, the, the uh, critical issues and needs that we can support and we can work together and create projects surrounding those issues. And then if that, uh, we are we have another parallel project being um, done uh, with one of our interns, WFWPI Impact Report um, of our projects for the last 30 years. So that also we might be uh, asking you some information for this. And then uh, sometime in October, we're thinking of really identifying local team and have, you know, uh, not just one or two, but you might be, you might want to expand your team uh, and then identify key issues, events, areas to be addressed for possible engagement. And in our UN level, UN offices level, by this time, we would be all, we have our UN day, the UN dream celebration. And, and maybe you can celebrate UN day in your area. That could be first of your projects. And then we would be already preparing for the delegation for CSW 68 and Carolyn is uh, CSW president in Geneva. So she, we can have firsthand information and updates on the CSW 68 and prepare your delegation. And you could at this time by November, what you can do is um, approach your government to find a way to whether you can be part of the government's delegation. And then write statements. Then we can work together. We can coach you on how to write UN statements. And uh, Carolyn's and Shruti is very good at this. So Shruti can um, help us facilitate with all these processes and then apply for, uh, yeah, I think here it says government, government uh, to be part of the government delegation of the CSW. And then by December, prepare for the high level political forum, um, getting into the, the uh, voluntary national uh, review, and then explore the VNR processes, organize, collaborate, partner with local stakeholders. And then uh, by the end of the year, submit a, a simple progress report of how you have done things and what are the uh, achievements and recommendations and challenges and recommendations. And for this part, for the remainder 2024 calendar, starting January, this schedule is to be decided by the team. Uh, it would have to be you as you create your plan for the year. And then the schedule is to be decided, yeah, the whole like of January all the way to December. And, um, we, we will help you and guide you. And by this time, hopefully after like four, five, six months, you would already be uh, at least to some degree familiar with what's going on in your local community. So expected outcome and impact um, by establishing the WFWPI regional UN relations and advocacy team in the region, WFWPI will solidify its commitment to creating a world of peace and sustainable development in this critical and dynamic part of, your, of the world, which is your region. The office will serve as a catalyst for creating a culture of peace aligned with the founding principles of WFWPI in contributing to the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals and fostering a more peaceful, an equitable future for women and their families and their communities across the region. And yeah, I think uh, that, that's it. Thank you. And 
then um yeah maybe questions and yeah. carolyn i think at this point we are having um we're kind of uh, transitioning right to our un global un meeting bi-weekly so that's why you'll see our un reps they can join now huh I think yes they yes um yeah and shruti uh, back to you for the q a yeah, so I think um, you've heard a lot. I think all of you, you've heard a lot. So um, yeah, I I think it's best if we take some quality time to actually ask what you feel, to share your questions and thoughts and doubts and clarifications without which if we still have questions in our mind, which is not answered, I think it won't help the process. So just go ahead. Like there is no question which is right or wrong. So just ask us anything on for example if you had had a question where to start how this goes and that and blah blah so yeah anybody oh, it's amazing thank you so much for explaining it to us Molly and Carolyn that was awesome I wanted to know in terms of uh, starting off is and also assistance around it are we going to be connecting regularly um and all such things like how do we kickstart the process okay okay so maybe we will take a question from Suzanne as well and then we'll come back uh, to one round of answering so because we don't have a lot of time now so yes Suzanne okay thank you so much uh, for the presentations and uh, Madam Caroline and Madam Mary and uh, what I understand in the brief is that um, we we need to create um, teams, uh, regional teams, and uh, these regional teams you have uh, uh, will be operating in close contact with um, the UN offices, and uh, the one the team leader who is going to be uh, you know recommended will be. We'll be attending the meetings the bi-weekly or and also making all these reports and also like um giving the you know working in collaboration with the IVP. That is uh I think that is what that's correct, Susan. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. I think that's that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So so I think I can quickly jump on you. Yes, one, uh, Shruti, one more question here from Geneva. Uh -huh. or, or comment? No. 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 Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so just quickly jump in. Um, I, yes, I think uh, that's perfectly right. I think uh, also to understand the vision here, right? I think we have two, at least two relatives. I think we need two. Uh, I don't think we need more than that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Merle uh, and Carolyn. I think we just need two as of now for each region. And then these two representatives will uh, work uh, with the IVP on one side and the other side is with the UN office director. So something like that. So, and then um, basically down the line is when we're seeing the creation of individual UN offices for these um, regions. Um, so it's a long, long way. Down to start with, I think we um, were discussing to have a training first. So uh, it's important that we all, so the first step is obviously identifying these two representatives for each region. So for Asia, for, um, for Middle East or for Africa, for every region, we need to first get these two representatives and then we will find a date. Um, we are thinking in August, like two days, a full training uh, it will be online uh, so we can have everybody together um, so this will be our first step 
Uh, but obviously the training is not like the first step to start to do anything. So like Merle was saying, I think um, these two representatives from each region can already join our bi-weekly UN office meeting. For example, this is the exact time we have our bi-weekly UN office meeting by um, 9 a.m. New York time um, uh, every other Tuesday. So once in two weeks. So the same way, um, the same way is where they could they could also join these meetings, but I think at um, yes. So these are the regular things we will be having, but obviously I think there will be a lot of one-on-one -on -one coordination with, for example, Merle and Carolyn, and also sometimes I think we also like um, specialize on regions. For example, sometimes in the Human Rights Council there must there might be a big focus on Africa, so it might be it might make more sense to at during that point of time, like that month, it might make more. Sense sense to coordinate often with um with the Geneva office or there might be a huge uh, focus on I don't know Asia and disarmament in Vienna they might be doing something in Vienna so it might make a lot of sense for the Asian representatives to coordinate a lot with Vienna and for example recently last week we had the session on Africa's development here in New York which we took part so um it would make so so the session was simply the General Assembly's interactive dialogue on African development so it would have meant it would mean so much for the new um for the New York uh, African representatives to quickly work with New York for for this week or something you know so it's more like corresponding with each other more like just knowing everything so obviously we have a whatsapp group and everything so we will we will con constantly keep updating and we will be sharing oh this is happening here uh, can can we have these two representatives support us or like they can join this or something because everything is now mostly hybrid or it is it is somewhere or the other available a lot all all over the world so we can make things like that happen um the other way so yes um i uh, maybe uh, carolyn or merle would you like to answer this question of like the meetings and everything as well more yes okay carolyn, carolyn first. and yeah i just want I think I changed it. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add, maybe not necessarily about the meetings, but but the question of who should I choose to be my representative for the region, huh? And even I'm assuming some of you on here would be good choices. I'm assuming that. But for, from my perspective, I think at the beginning we were thinking young person, and of course young and bright and knowledgeable a little bit about some you know, international relations or something in that area is very helpful. But I think not only young, because for instance, someone who could be very good to start out would be someone who is already working in a chapter where you are already engaged with your government. So already they have some knowledge about how that is working and how that how important that is. And then it would be to really raise that to the next level, which would be to really think about engaging for the work of the United Nations directly. And uh, so I think we can, um, uh, you know, anyway, we, we, you can have like some recommendations from your side about who you think would be best. But I think some, you know, could be a combination of younger and in ex less experienced and someone who is more, has some experience in the field. Um, and then of course, this could be a year at a time. You have go on, have another team the second year or however you would want to do it. So yeah, I'm really. Thank you, Carolyn. So in addition to that, um, in terms of how to really officially get uh, uh, started, we have here uh, in New York, for all our UN representatives, we have an application form we'll send you. Once uh, the IVP sends us the recommendation, um, we are going to send uh, to the IVPs the application form, uh, which you need to sign with your uh, curriculum vitae and profile and you know list of experiences. And then um, we draft, there is a, 
a volunteer UN representative contract because the UN representatives, they will be representing Women's Federation um, International. So we have a, a paperwork to do. And then with that, we can go ahead with the training. Yeah, orientation. There's another orientation and training. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have also in our, at least in Gen New York and Geneva, we have short-term internships. Like in Geneva, we have a human rights internship several times a year. So there can also be some kind of supplemental training on the side if you're either your representatives for the region or even others are interested to, to you know, understand more about the workings of the UN. Susan? I just want to make a small comment that um, I've been asked several times to recommend uh, young young uh, girl, young adults, uh, especially to represent us in the UN meetings and all the different programs that there is for the UN. And uh, normally I choose the ones who have been, who are either studying or working with the international relations, you know, and uh, somehow it has not worked so well. Um, but I was thinking this time maybe I could I could recommend someone who is already working with the UN uh, as a job, you know, she's working with the maybe WHO or something like that. And she, because she knows about the UN, how it operates and all that, and she's very professional. And then most probably she can raise uh, young, young ladies uh, through her experiences and all, because it's not everyone. UN work is not for everyone. And uh, of course, in Africa, the UN is not that, it's active, yes, but, is is um I mean like there's not so many people who are specializing about the UN work, literally. Yeah, not there are not so many. There are so not so many uh, you know, like even studying about it, those kind of things, maybe only the international relations uh mm -hmm. programs. Yeah, so that's what I think I could do for Africa. Otherwise, I've recommended already two, and they have been attending. In fact, I think they are even in your in your WhatsApp groups. But they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do, and uh, it's a bit. It has been a bit challenging. Yeah. So anyway, I, I think with a new uh, mindset, I think we can do better. Yeah, to help Thank in this. this yeah. Mm -hmm. Susan, to to answer that, um, when when choosing your representative, it would really depend on what is your vision for your region. Um, it's not really more on what we want, but it's your vision on how uh, you want to this UN work to develop your region. So if you feel that someone who is already working at the United Nations and the capacity of this person to, uh, to support and to promote the work of Women's Federation in your region, so um, if you feel like, okay, this is the, the right person, then yeah, she would be a good choice. But um, it, from what Carolyn mentioned, it doesn't have to be young person. Uh, it could be someone who has a bit of experience um, understanding about the UN system and, and you know, working with policymakers and all that. But really like, your projects, um, someone who can uh, uh, wrap everything, your project and, and put a language to it and make a report and, and promote it to the national government and make it um, as a program to the government. So, cause if I, I feel like if you recommend someone who's already working at the UN, that person could be like really just a diplomat and, um, they could represent, he could, she could represent you very well. But in terms of developing WFWP's projects to be part of the government and all that, those are uh, things that uh, you need to consider depending on your long term vision for Africa. I think that's right. I think the skills, uh, we, can, we can help with the skills, you know, like translating 
the reporting into the a little bit better UN language or something like that. That's that's what the UN office should do, actually. Huh? I mean, should help with that kind of training. Yeah. If I may just quickly jump in, I think it's a great idea to bring someone who already has experience with the UN but uh, or the UN agencies, but I think we should also be very careful that the person does not currently work with any of the agencies. I mean, they're interning or just working in a, as an external consultant. So they're within the secretary at the, of the UN, there are several uh, levels of working. So if that person is working as an intern or as an external consultant, the person is not completely a staff of the UN. Then it is okay for them to work for another external organization or agency but if they are not working within the but if they're as staff for example if the person you are talking about Susan if she is a staff of the WHO it will be a conflict of interest and she can't work for like other she can't carry UN representative badge it it will be a conflict of interest and so I think we have to be very careful that we don't put that person in a very difficult situation as well. So I think, um, yeah, so they can't accept another position outside if they're a, if they're a full-time staff of the uh, UN. So maybe um, that is also something to keep in mind. Uh, if they're, if, yeah, but if they're a consultant or just an intern or something, then it's okay. But if they're like a full-time staff, it's also important to keep that in mind. But yes, I think answer this point where you said like there are already young people or there are already people who are in, but they don't know where to start. And to help that, we will training ground. So that's what we want to do. We want to help with that, like to, so everybody can understand where to start. We will even go into details of what is the what will be, uh, what will be their, what be your role as a new representative and everything. So it will go through everything and how can regionally incorporate what has been done. So we will go through everything. It will be a two days full training so that we will start and we will have little assignments of little tasks and shared projects that we want them to help with. So we will carefully uh, start this um, from so that's that's why we want your help to identify these two good things for the long term like Merle and Carolyn mentioned and then we then um and then we will train them so it, it should not be um a, a huge um um yes thing so that's all I wanted to say yeah uh Preeta she has something good on Preeta's as well yes I just have two questions I just wanted to know how the who is the yeah, selection can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes. Yes. I just wanted to know how is the yes, selection I, process. I, 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 oops. Yeah, my first question is how is the selection process and what is the criteria? I think also? it's the IVPs who do it with. I think uh, it's the IVPs who make the selection of two people and they recommend like the selection to um, Carolyn and Merle, who's the director and deputy director of the UN office. And together they decide if that too is okay. So it's the regional IVP's role made here is, yeah, is basically my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Carolyn or Merle. Yeah. I think that's and right. Yeah. And like to just yeah, and I would like to know what is the criteria or skill um you're looking into a UN representative mainly. Carolyn, you want to answer that? Um yeah, I mean in general or for this particular um regional oh. team that we're setting up yeah for the original like okay. yeah but I, but I the reason i in fact have my hand raised right now it's not maybe the only answer to to your question but is because i wanted to add the point that we um 
I think best would be to, you know, to really get, to really bring results as, soon, as quickly as possible. In other words, choose not only the person, but the place. For instance, in Africa, if you have a particular nation that is really doing well in terms of, you know, just doing very relevant kind of activities and maybe has someone also who understands about reporting those to their local government or so, that, because what we would like to do is even within this one year, we would like to showcase, like to have some good practice model in Africa, there is this country that has been beginning to engage more directly with the UN and look what could happen. They found there's already, we are quoted in their, you know, they're talking about us in their debates in the Senate or, the, you know, they, they got some statement that they were working on for some local project is now being quoted at the General Assembly because I, I and I think we have many, many opportunities for that kind of thing. So, and we know things go quicker once there is some real example of the value of this kind of effort, then there will be more countries and more people who will be thinking like that, you know, and wanting to engage. Yeah. Thank Is that you. okay? Is that enough for your answer? Yeah. yeah. You know, Thank could, could I just ask my little my little my my newfound friend here I, I because she's listening in for the first time but she is very wise already I mean we had an incredible discussion over lunch um but I just I wanted to ask her about her thoughts on this what she just heard just now in women's federation and so Lua oh yeah thank you uh, so as as you know I've been here since the beginning uh, so I know a lot about the organization oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm kidding but no um I I guess that uh, this sounds like a very like beautiful initiative and I'm sure that this will be you know uh, flourishing and having like very very amazing fruits in the future uh, as soon as things start to be more systematized in that sense, then also we will be able to know like how to organize things. And and I, I guess a few of my thoughts that I had was more that um, I, I guess one very important question to always remind ourselves of, of is the vision, the bigger picture. So what is it that we want to achieve here? Um, and then also connected to the different regions and the different UN offices, there are different, obviously there are different subjects to be thinking of. So here in Geneva, we have the human rights issues more that are more focused on. And, and, I, and I see that this may be this potential, there, there, there's a lot of potential for uh, collaborating between the different offices in that sense that would also help bring more clarity to, to the message that uh, we want to send as a united front. So, so I think with this, it sounds like we will be much more united and understanding of the vision. And I'm guessing, I'm not sure if you have this already, but having an advocacy strategy with maybe a few points, a few principles that are like in the front that you always want to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. And then if you have these three or four, um, and if they're not too many, because it's good to have only a few, because then the UN will always know, oh, so these are the, fo well, the, the focal points of focus. Mm -hmm. It becomes much easier than, you know, talking about everything. So, so if we have like three, let's say women, peace and youth empowerment, then it's much easier to really promote that in a sense that they would also get it. Uh, and here in Geneva and New York and, 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 and also Nairobi, for instance. Um, but this is only my humble understanding so far of what I've heard, and I'm sure that you have done this work already. Mm -hmm. uh, but these were, were a few thoughts that I wanted to bring up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to you, Shruti. So yes, we do have that uh, kind of advocacy focuses, and I also feel like um it's also beyond uh we do have that priorities like uh the portfolio we will share all of them when we actually uh start the training and everything um but you can also find it on our website you can find all the uh, uh all that in our website but um <clears throat> yes so uh one of the interesting things that we will start with is the training. And so um, we will keep uh, in contact with you all regarding the um, two um, 
um, UN reps for each region being selected. And then we'll talk, we will create a group with all, and then we will basically uh, find the time, find the time to host this training so that we will do. But also to just to add, I think it's also a very regional specialization. So, for example, in Geneva, it's a lot of focus on human rights. In uh, New York, there's a huge focus on development and peace building and conflict negotiation. Um, in Vienna, there's a huge focus on uh, disarmament, uh, crime prevention, um, and uh, yeah. So, and then there is this huge focus in Nairobi on um, uh, on the environment. So, because these headquarters of these programs are present in these places, in the Middle East, for example, we have uh, UNRWA, ESQA. Um, we have uh, we have a lot of uh, and we have you are there are regional expertise even for the UN so forget us like even the UN has like regional expertise to each of the headquarters so if you also keep that in mind and try to identify the uh, UN reps who would who would be wonderful to correspond to these uh, to these specializations of the United Nations in the region itself I think that would be amazing. So yes, I think that's all from my side. And if and if Carolyn and Merle, if you don't have anything else to add, I think, uh, and also if there's no other questions, I think we will keep in touch and follow up um, on the representatives. Like, should we have a date, uh, Carolyn and Merle, like to finalize the uh, representatives, like the two representatives, so the IVPs can have that in their mind, um, like a deadline date or something like that. Maybe, I don't know, first end of first week of August. We're 25th of July today. So if we have like, I don't know, By August, you know, I think, uh, yeah, first week is maybe uh, third week. Do you, do you, do you say third? Shruti, you broke enough. We August, can't hear you. Merly. Yes. Did, did you, you say, say third it week again? Of August. Did you say third week of August? Third week of August, yeah. No, but I think we need to have the UN reps ready before so we can find a date for the training in August. Is that the idea? The, the, which the training that we have is for the UN, isn't it for the uh, current UN representatives? I think uh, the region needs a bit more time to find the right person and setting up and the paperwork back and forth. Okay. I think that is something that needs time. Okay, so then we will have the training possibly in September for the regional UN reps then. Yes. Okay, okay, so that's more clear. Well, we could do the training actually uh, towards the end of August if they're set up by, um, yeah. I think it will need at least, I think we need to at least give two weeks for uh, for like a day to be decided between like the day they are and the um, and the training. So if we say- That, that can be decided time. later, I think, you know, between our offices, we can decide that. I think at this time, it's hard to pinpoint a so, date because there's still many things could happen. But if we give it a uh, third week of August for, for uh, the finalization of appointing uh, the regional UN rep, I think that's enough time. Okay, have that said. Carolyn, anything else? Uh, no, no, thank you. It's been good. I mean, we have, of course, Latin America. That's also, we have to send the recording there and we have to, you know, also have to follow up a little bit with the other regions. Huh? Um, also, Zoe should have been on. Zoe was going to join for Lebanon. Lebanon has a, uh, is Zoe on? No. No. Uh, but I think- Anne, were... it looks like Anne. Anne's question. Anne? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, 
in uh, in our region, there's no UN offices. Um, we have UN women are quite strong. In uh, I know Australia and New Zealand, they're quite strong. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what the emphasis UN women have here. I know they uh, CSW is a big agenda, but I don't know. Is do we have to find out what the the focus is for the region? No. For new and um, doesn't have to be. Shruti. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it does not have to be just for uh, if like in Asia Pacific too. Um, if you can find a way to work with UN women, but it does, it's not just limited to UN women. What I did in Philippines was uh, work together with the UN Information Center. In every country, UN has a, what, UNIC, we, they call it UNIC, UN Information Center. And then, uh, so that's one. And another is a uh, work with your local national government. So, you know, promoting and working together with our local and national government to educate them in uh, information dissemination and um, influencing policies and partnerships on projects, implementation of projects. So I believe that this is the quickest way to achieve the goals of the UN together with the civil society organizations. Yeah. I, uh, in addition to that, I think also each government has their department. You know, gen it used to be just gender equality. Now it has many other names added to it. But I think I think one of the first steps would be in each country to write and introduce ourselves. Also could include possibly Merle this this new impact uh, statement or something like that to kind of shows our our collection of work, you know, and, uh -huh. uh, and then just ask because every nation will be different and ask, you know, who we could get in touch with. At the UN, they used to do that in Geneva. When you were a new NGO, they would invite you to the NGO liaison office and they would introduce you to all the different places where you could do something, you know, the 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 events that you could join or the bodies that you could join and now they 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 stopped doing that but I think that part of, that will be something we can coach you with I think along the way you know how to do that but but yes. but but UN women is not necessarily the best place it depends on it's also a personality there you know so maybe somebody else has a better more personality that is more in agreement with the kind of work that we are doing, huh? Yeah, even the, the Commission on Women, uh, I don't know if in every country, we probably call it the Ministry of Women in your country, but in Philippines, we have a Commission on Women, and, uh, but any, any department actually, it depends on where our project can fit into and find its way into influencing local and national policies. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So these two people, they don't need to be from different nations. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Uh, my, my answer Do is- Do they not, need to be? Not necessarily. I would say again, instead yeah. of thinking of covering the region, think of making a, a big impact in one place to start. Huh? So maybe two in one place is actually good as a start. Huh? Yeah, it's good to have a team, like working yeah. together closely, physically. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It would be really good to... Um, touch on all the work that you've done in the Philippines, Merle, um, before you left in that arena. So 
it, yeah. it is part of the training and uh, uh, during the CSW this year, I gave a training. So yeah, it will be part of the training. Yeah, it's very inspiring actually, Merle's work. Huh? Yeah, I'll see if Grace can come. She's here in the in Cambodia. Oh, we just had dinner with Reverend Song. Oh, yeah, nice. at, the, at the table, mm. and then everyone introduced themselves. So I mm. missed a little bit of the beginning because of that. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Good. So does it only have to be two people? Can there be more than two people? For well, each you know what? Um, and for in your case, New Zealand, we trained two people from New Zealand. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah know. New Zealand is another that, that lady I've cut emailed Merle, um, not Merle, Matapa and Tin, Tin Mama. Huh? Anyway, she hasn't responded. She missed out. And I, this lady, I feel so sad for her. Oh. Uh, yeah. So therefore, does it, uh, can it be only two people or can it be more than two people in the region? I think if it's manageable, personally, if it's manageable, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's just limited to, to two people from your region. And if you have a strong team that you really feel like, okay, they also can contribute. Um, in this case, you have two people in your mind and then in New Zealand, if just because for, for Asia Pacific, Shelly and, and Tin Mama O, they have been really proactive. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, that is something yeah. that we you probably need to decide. It, it's yeah. up to you, Anne. I think it would be Tin Mama because she was appointed as the UN. I know Matapa's <laughs> really busy. And she's very good, yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah, Tin Mama is really good. Um, Okay, that's good to know. They can have their own Zoom meetings and collaborate. Of course, you would have to oversee them, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good. It's really good. Thank you. Okay, so if there is not any more questions, I think we can we can close. What do you think, Carolyn? Yeah, I think so. And then as you see, some people have been joining. This is part of our, actually our Vienna team, Maria and Imgard. Renat is not here today. Uh, Kyungin has also been on for a while. So this is, as Marley said, this is our normal bi-weekly meeting time when the UN office teams get together. So you would be joining that as part of this regional team. And we have different. Oh, agenda. oh, sorry to interrupt, Carolyn. Before yeah. I forget, so Kyung yeah. in Oliveira, she is our point person for Africa communication uh, for Africa. So Susan, I mean, you know each other, right? Kyung in and Susan. She yes, volunteered to be our point person uh, to communicate with Africa. So that's very helpful. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know, Kyung and are you able to show your face? You probably are driving on the road somewhere. She's always driving. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe she is, huh? Okay. So yeah, Shruti, back to you for closing. I think just as we said, um I'm trying to switch on. Oh my god the internet okay oh so perfect <laughs> so i just as we said um i think we will get back to each other find the representatives um i think we already have so many people in our mind that we are asking like oh it's just too enough like so um we're very happy to see all this uh wonderful response and obviously i think it's um 
I think it's just, I think the 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 interesting part is also to convey to the UN drafts that we select and we're like, oh yeah, would you like to do this? And then there's either a big excitement or there's a big um, uh, question of how am I, am I, will I be able to do it? So I think, I think it's a, it's a process of encouragement, learning and everything. So I think it will be very interesting. I am personally excited to have a wider team because sometimes it's just so, so nice to have so many representatives. For example, last year we had this uh, regional seminar, which uh, was hosted in each of the regions. So there was one in Bangkok, there was one, this, these are international seminars uh, by the UN. And the seminars means not a lecture, but seminars usually mean um, a high level conference with member states and other UN bodies. So every, there was one in each region, but we really didn't have people to go to these regions, we're all like in the in the headquarters city, so we really couldn't go to the regions where actually there was so much done. We were like thinking like, oh, who can we send in Beirut? Who can we send in Bangkok? Who can we send here in um, um, Nairobi? Uh, Nairobi. Like, yeah. It was very difficult for us to just identify people. And um, I think now we will have a, huge way ahead so thank you so much i think if that's all uh, we'll keep in touch we'll talk to each other soon i think uh, i think most of you all know um uh carolyn and merle very much personally as well i think they're just a message away uh so yes mm. so that's all i would say and um yeah if you also have any doubts regarding anything that you would like someone to talk to about the UN procedures or something if they are not available if Carolyn and Merle is not available you can email me anytime you have my email address I wrote to you all so yes and um, we'll also be keep we'll also be sharing a lot of information of what's happening here in the meantime so you can also watch all that and I think that's also a guiding point and obviously also you can share our it to the to the reps you are going to identify you can share them our newsletter our news video recently we launched our first news video we will launch another one this month and and then also we have we have historically we have a lot of <laughs> newsletters on the website so uh, I think when they go through all this I, and also a lot of articles on the website as well just as website articles as well you can go through all of them and you can see how much contribution and what kind of contribution we've already done that can be an example you can refer to the representatives that you wish to select and then um refer to so yes that's all i would say thank you so much and um yeah, I think we have 20 more minutes for our um, UN offices meeting. And uh, yes, thank you all IVPs and you other joining. invited guests. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. Thank you, Shweta. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Bye, Kahin. Thank you, Kahin. And Frita. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let me charge my let me charge my laptop. Battery is running. I'm doing the same. Yeah, mine mine ran out actually. I had to run for. Yeah. So hi everyone. Uh, sorry, uh, Lily. I didn't see your picture. You were on the second screen. I'm sorry. I didn't mention you when I said who was on. Uh, but I see you're here too. Nice to see you. you. Look like you're sitting in the park somewhere. Or is that a is that a, a, a backdrop or is that really That's where you a are? Backdrop from North, Northern Australia. Yeah. Ah, I see. <laughs> we had a lot of representatives from Australia this time, actually. Huh? Yeah. 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 All right. Asia okay. one, two, one and two, and Africa. Yeah. I don't I I'm Zoe and Rosie. I don't know why they didn't join, actually. They were they were going to I, I wrote to Susan last night and said, please join. Uh yeah. But it's, it's a shame because it was clearly, a, I mean, you can, there's a recording, but there's something with the live event that is a little bit more stimulating, huh? Yes. Right? 
The recording yeah. is continuing. But You're aware of that, right? Yeah. Do we want to cut it and restart or something? Yes, yes, let's do that. Who, 